Welcome to the Joy of Coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 211 of the Joy of Coding. Hi, how are you? How's it going? My name is Mike Conley. I'm going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm sorry if the camera's kind of going in and out of focus. There we go, a little bit better. Um, yeah, I'm again streaming from my basement. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, under like the, was it the, the rules? The, to be a good citizen, it's stay at home time. So I'm in my basement. I hope the Wi-Fi holds out. I hope everything kind of goes smoothly. But if it doesn't, that's, you know, that's pretty typical. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me switch uh, uh, to my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. So today is April 8th, episode 2211. 2000, and uh, just a reminder for the folks who are new, uh, welcome, first of all. And second of all, no plan survives breakfast. Uh, this this stream is not planned really in any way uh, beyond... Oh man, that autofocus is brutal. Let me just turn autofocus off. There we go. There we go. Uh, th the stream is not planned beyond just a very vague guide on what it is that I'm hoping to work on. I don't have any like pre-written solutions. Um, I don't have any like some of some of the plan may have formed in my head, but all the stuff I'm going to be writing and working on today, I haven't got like it re like pre-created that I'm just going to type out like you would see maybe during a demo or during like a, uh, a lecture or something. This is live software development. That's how it works. And so things might go wrong. I might go down a blind alley. I might get stuck. Uh, who knows? Who knows what'll happen? We might end up reading more code than writing more code. That happens sometimes. Sometimes we'll just end up confused, and sometimes we write a patch and it works out. You know, like it, who knows what'll happen today? So that's the first thing. The second thing is I wanted to point out that there is an episode guide. If you are new to the stream, um, maybe you're watching this recording far in the future. Uh, long beyond April 8th, 2020, and you're looking for, you know, details on what exactly happened during this episode, or a past episode, or a future episode. Well, the episode guide is probably what you want to look at, and the link to the episode guide is in here, the agenda. And the agenda is something that I will now share a link to uh, in the Twitch chat. So folks in the Twitch chat, here's the agenda. Uh, boom, there's the agenda. And for the people who are watching this on YouTube, uh, the agenda is in the uh, video description. And for the folks watching this on Air Mozilla, it'll be in the handouts dis uh, section. And for anyone else who's watching this elsewhere, well, you're just gonna have to like use your favorite search engine and look for the Joy of Coding episode guide and the agenda. Um, they, they interlink with one another, interlinked. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna skip past talking more about the episode guide, although I will point out that the episode guide is completely viewer driven. If you yourself have your own notes, maybe your own addenda, corrections, you wanna expand upon something I worked on or you know, um, you know, correct something that I said, maybe I was wrong about something, um, then feel free to send a pull request to the repository. I merge pretty much everything in. Um, so just you know, send me a pull request. And if you're not sure what a pull request is or how to contribute, there's a contributing guide in the agenda so that you know how to do it. So hopefully that works out. The other thing I wanted to do is put on some tunes. I've been doing this for the past couple of streams and you all have seemed to respond okay to it. So the way I do this, this is a free music archive. And unfortunately there's no volume control on this page. Uh, so whenever I play this, it's quite loud. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is in order to control the volume, I generally uh, get at the audio element Is. Uh, there's the audio element and then I set the volume on it to about 0 0.05 let's see how that is still a little loud so I'm gonna go down to 0 0.02 still a little loud 0 0.015 how about 0 0.01 a little lower there how's that 0 0.005 we got some funky tunes for free in the background, the free music archive. I'm using Broke for free. This is this album called Slam Funk. Uh, I will put a link to that in the agenda. All right, so what do I want to, what do I want to work on today? Uh, well, for the past couple of weeks, you've probably been, um, if you've been watching, we've been working on the About Home Startup Cache. This is to improve the perceived and real startup time of Firefox desktop whenever you are um, 
you know, when you have the default settings and when we show about home as your initial uh, tab. And that, a bunch of that stuff has actually landed very recently. So maybe a couple episodes back, you remember working on the page thumbnail protocol that has landed recently. We most recently uh, turned on the privileged about content process and nightly by default that's set to ride the trains in Firefox. 77 I think what version is nightly right now 77 yeah so it'll ride out the trains in 77 uh, let's see what else um, what else has gone out let me look at my closed bugs if let me know if the music is distracting if it's too loud or distracting just drop me a message in the twitch chat or matrix or something uh, I closed out a bunch of other bugs that were related to getting the privilege about content process enabled and the mechanism that reads the cached document and sends it down to the privileged about content process, that landed yesterday. So that's in nightly now, although it's turned off by default and it doesn't do anything even if you turn it on in the preferences because we need the part that actually writes the cache and that's the part I'm working on right now. And it's coming along. Um, we've got, we've made some progress and that's what I'm hoping to look at today. So this is central. I've got this patch in the works. This is something that we were looking at uh, last week actually was uh, making the DS image react component um, use declarative responsive image techniques in order to, uh, ooh, I got some review feedback. Um, declarative uh, responsive image techniques in order to make it easier to cache. And I got a review, this is great. Um, generally this is good, looking good, but requesting a little bit of a refactor to make it more flexible, see inline comment. I don't like having these sizes hard-coded into this component as cards are not the only use case of DS image. In fact, it's already being used by other components that are not currently enabled in a production layout. For example, DS text promo here on list. We're also going to be using it for other components moving forward. I think instead we should pass in the size sets via a property and maybe even have some kind of sensible defaults. That way the parent components are defining the image sizes and DS image remains flexible. That's a great idea. Uh, and maybe we can do that today. Um, so instead of hard coding them into the uh, into the DS image itself, the things that use the DS image pass them in, so that DS image remains as flexible as possible. Um, okay, so we can do that. Maybe we should do that today, because uh, then we can move this forward. Uh, let's do that. Uh, thanks for the review, Gavin, if you're watching. Uh, I, I doubt you're watching, but if you are, thank you very much for the review, and we're gonna try and look at that right now. So this is the patch that he just reviewed. I'm gonna check it out. The, uh, so far we're good sound-wise, and keep the sound on, it's at 100. Or like, the Giku Door says thumbs up, or 100 emoji or whatever. So we're all good there. Uh, I also want to point out for the folks who are chatting in the Twitch chat, um, there is a separate channel for chatting that I've been using. Uh, I haven't figured out a way to bridge it to Twitch yet in a way that will work, um, but it's um, we're using a, a replacement for IRC. It's called Matrix. Uh, it's We got rid of IRC.mozilla.org and we've switched to Matrix and the instructions for reaching that live hacking channel where you can reach me both during the stream and after the stream. Uh, are in the agenda. So if you go back here and look under chat, you can find the instructions on how to join. And I'm only sort of monitoring the Twitch chat. So if you have questions, it's actually better for you to reach me through the, the Matrix channel. Okay, so let's let's try and do what Gavin suggested because I think it's a good idea. Let me pump up the font a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So what are all the places that use DS image? Let's see. He mentioned a few. I have a feeling some of them aren't in the tree yet. But if we look for the JSX syntax of DS image, we can see DS card, DS text promo, hero, and list. So, uh, great. What we're gonna do then is we're going to make it so that DS card, um, we pass in some sane defaults. Uh, and we'll, we'll use DS card as our, like, DS card was the one I was originally designing this for, so let's make sure it works with that, and then we'll adapt it for the other ones as well. I'm also gonna close, oh, I've got a bunch of files open. I'm gonna close these out, so we don't have to worry about them. Don't save, don't save, don't save. Okay, so we're starting from scratch. Let's find dscard.jsx. I'm, I'm still learning about React, by the way. Like, I, um, I've been working on the Firefox browser for a long time, 
uh, and I'm in a part of the browser, the front end, the, the about home part and the new tab part. So this thing uses React. Our dev tools also use React as a way of like organizing the front end code. And comparatively, uh, it is so much more modern than, uh, than what we tend to use for the rest of the browser. There are pluses and minuses to React. It's not like the be all end all solution, but if you have a complicated um, UI that has lots of different states that it can be in, uh, React actually seems like a pretty logical choice. The, uh, I'd say the only issue is that the way it's currently used in Firefox for the About Home and About New tab page is quite complica complex, quite complicated. The way the Redux store is kind of used to also act as the messaging channel to the parent process is a bit strange. We kind of uh, abuse isn't the right word. We use middleware, Redux middleware, in order to like also act as a, a message channel. It, it's it's a bit, um, it's interesting anyways. Um, certainly for an old browser hacker like myself, this stuff is pretty weird and alien, but you know, I, you can teach an old dog new tricks and uh, I'm learning. So this is the stuff that's hard coded that we want to, uh, we want to factor out. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna pretend that, I'm just gonna actually, uh, so these are all the hard coded values. I'm gonna take these out start and I'm gonna put them in the constructor and I'm gonna say like this dot sizes equals yeah, just I'm just gonna reorganize it just a little bit just to make it easier for me to refactor and keep it all organized in my head and then I'm gonna say this dot source set this. Wow, listen to this funky dance music. This isn't normally the sort of stuff I'd listen to, but I'm into it right now, I guess. Is this what gets people, like, uh, really pumped up? Yeah. Max Jowett asks, what are the cons of using React? Uh, I'd say the, the main con is that it seems a little overpowered at times, particularly for the fact that, like, um, well, and it's also designed for web applications, strictly for web applications. Um, I mean, yes, there is React Native, so you can build like native applications using React like um, patterns, but the React JS library is for web applications. And Firefox is a hybrid of a web application. Parts of it are like a web application, but also a desktop application. And so React.js is sort of a good fit some of the time, if that makes any sense. Um, the part of the problem is that uh, I think the way that React is being integrated into Firefox for About Home uses uh, a lot of modern web technology uh, models. Like it uses NPM, for example, to get all these like things, and then it bundles together using something called Webpack, uh, which is a, a a web development model. And that model makes sense whenever you're building a website that has to stream something to a browser over the network. But it makes less sense when you're building everything on the client. Uh, like it's all client side. And so there's like unnecessary build steps where I have to like go into the new tab directory and run like a bunch of NPM stuff just to get the changes baked into the browser. And it also makes it hard to inspect the code. Like I guess we should use source maps or something um, whenever we're uh, inspecting code, but like they, hang on, I, I'm trying to formulate my the the cons for React into something a little more concrete. It seems overpowered and maybe even diametrically opposed to what ultimately we want for the web in some ways because. Web components are something we're really trying to push. Custom elements and web components as well uh, are, are two of the technologies we're trying to like move forward all, uh, on the web. And React isn't really designed to be like nicely compatible with like custom elements and web components. Yes, they can work together. You can kind of use them and, and you can compose them together. But libraries like, I think Vue.js for example, is a lot more, um, I think it was designed with web components and custom elements in mind. So that's another objection. Uh, what is the other thing? The, the, 
one of the things I like about React is that it seems to be a lot easier to write tests for things. And yes, this is old school React. Um, you know, we're using old school patterns for React. We haven't started transitioning to hooks or anything, anything fancy like that. Which I've read about, but I'm not even familiar with them. I think they're like functions, something, something functions. Um, See this dot source set. You're not happy with this. I'm not sure what base source is. Right. So that's not going to work. Um, so I'm going to turn this into a set of numbers rather than. What do I want to turn this into? 296. 296. So these are for like the two times, like the higher resolution monitors. They're just the doubles of these. So we can calculate that on the fly and not make the caller do the calculations. So really all we want for source set is like the mapping. We can probably generate these automatically actually, because this information is here. It's this, it's this other dimension that we don't know. So maybe what we really need is a, a mapping from like a media rule or like the this thing, which may or may not be like a media matcher to an like an array or an object that contains the width and the height. I think that's really it. Um, so let's try this. width, um, 296, uh, and then height, 148, and these are pixels, and then the next one will be like this, so this is kind of, kind of be the form, I guess is what I'm designing, the form of what will be called with, what will be passed in as the properties, 218, height, 109, and these, these values that I'm, I'm pumping in, I was able to glean by just using inspection with these various sort of like breakpoints whenever the page is at different sizes. Because before we were calculating it all dynamically, which is fine, except whenever you're trying to create this cache in a worker where there are no widths or heights. So we need to do it declaratively. Um, and I think ultimately this will make things generally better because we don't have to do layout um, layout calculations uh, needlessly during initialization of this component. Maybe I'm just naive, but the biggest advantage of Nost is how much less code it takes to write React with hooks. No more constructors, no more binding, no more this. I've never used hooks, so I can't comment, but sounds nice. I don't mind this. Like, some of the pain that I think people experience with, uh, with JavaScript. Maybe I'm just, like, snow blind or I have Stockholm Syndrome, but I don't really feel it. Um, but okay, I mean, whatever, whatever you, whatever makes things better for you, um, use whatever tool you need. I have no, uh, I have no problems with any of them. So maybe what I'll do is. This is what gets passed in. I'm gonna say this dot past sizes, because I'm gonna simulate now what happens whenever we construct. We're gonna generate the sizes and source set. Uh, so like for let, um, I know it's not gonna like the fact that like, I'm just checking the properties, uh, but that's okay. Rule in, this dot past sizes. I'm gonna say this dot sizes, which is gonna start as an empty array. And maybe I can turn this, maybe the fancy functional thing will be to turn this into like a map function or something, but for now I, I don't care. Um, push, um, we're gonna push a string. And the string is let size rule equal uh, rule. Uh, what is it? Rule space 
and then this value, which will be the width, I believe, um, is dot past sizes rule width x. Uh, we need a dollar sign here, and then we're gonna push that size rule in here, and then at the very end we have to push in uh, one last one, which is the like smallest one. something together uh, and we'll clean it up as we go. Um, if this stuff passed, let dimensions equal this stuff passed sizes rule and then we're going to use dimensions instead here. And we're going to say if dimensions dot less than the smallest, then smallest is dimensions.width, and then we're going to push that, and then we're going to push um, smallest. So that should construct us this. Sizes. Uh, so this dot size star equals sizes. Uh, join. So that should get us the string that we need. And then we also kind of want to do this, and maybe we can do this at the same time when we're when we're going through these rules. Let source set equals that. Max Jow goes, do you have any suggestions on how to learn Git more in depth? Um, and then Smurf D is dropping in with some knowledge. So thumbs up. Thanks, Smurf D, for taking point on answering uh, Max Jowett's. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Max Jowett? Yeah, Jowett's questions. So I can probably reuse each of these uh, in, so in order to do this at the same time. And then sort them. <laughs> All right, this is kind of crazy. Um, so like, uh, source sets dot push and then we're gonna calculate this hmm I think this needs to this needs to be sorted from largest to smallest. So if I insert, I'm going through each one of these. I'm going to insert the double, and then the single. We're going to have to do a sorting pass, and we're done. So I'm trying to think what is the right structure here. Do I have the right structure? We want things to be as simple as possible for the caller, and I it, simple but expressive. Um, and I think this is simple enough and expressive enough. Um, right now, we're also presuming that the caller is going to pass these in this order.
Well, I mean, this is an object. It has no order. I mean, it kind of has this implicit order. I have a feeling when I do four in, it's just going to go through it like this, which is nice, but there's no implied, really no implied order. I wonder if an array makes more sense. Um, because there's a real order. And then for each one, what? I want to do, or a set. No, a set has no order. An array has an order. And for each element, what do we have in here? Just a mapping from a name, a rule to some dimensions. Uh, maybe that can be as actually as simple as an array of an array of arrays. I know this is less descriptive, and maybe that's a problem. But let's let's try this, and maybe I'll I'll correct it as I go. If it's not immediately obvious, I'm just like coming up with this as I go. That's how the stream works. Um, and I might come up with a different idea. As, as we do this, I'm just trying to figure out what the right ergonomics are for the, the collar. You want this to be easy to use. So then we can, instead of doing this and like this weird thing, we can sort Sizes equals this dot past sizes dot sort. And then um, return. I think it's like a. We'll use the first element, which will be the width dimension minus b. I think that'll do it. Or is it theme I say? I can't remember. JavaScript uh, array.prototype sort. Compare function. Return less than zero, sort A to an index lower than B. Um, so if this is greater, oh man, like. It was just a pattern, yeah, A minus B, that's what you want to do, yes. Ascending order, yes, that's what we want. Okay, so that will give us our smallest one. Our smallest one's going to be the first one. And now, this music, I don't know, I, I've learned... <laughs> Doug is why. hey Eli Difficult, how's it going? Um... This music, I don't know if I dig it, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, we'll keep it going for now, but let me know what you think in the chats. This isn't what I normally listen to, and its I find it a little distracting for myself. If people are into it, we can keep it on. But uh, sort of like electric circus thing isn't really working for me. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our rule with height. We sort them, and now we need to construct the sizes and source sets. So we go through each, this is where we're going to have to change the way we iterate. Uh, we're going to go through each rule of the past sizes. This is going to now be in uh, like sorted order. And then we say that the dimensions, we can say width height equals um, I think there's like this some fancy uh, Past sizes. I think there's a way to like spread from the we have an array I want to take spread array JavaScript. I want to take just the last two elements. Numbers. I, I want just the last two. Yeah, okay. Functions, args. Just the last two. Oh, right, I can shift. I can 
can shift by one. Ugh. It's kind of gross. I don't really want to modify these as I do it, but I could. Uh, by shifting, the other thing I can do is I can like slice. That returns a, correct me if I'm wrong here, if I have like one, two, three, slice one, that's gonna return two, three, okay. And that returns a copy, I'm pretty sure. So X will slice one. Yeah, it returns a copy. So that's what I want. Width height equals slice one. That's what I wanted. So when we're say the rule, and then we're gonna say that's that still works as the size rule. We don't need to do this thing anymore. And then we push that onto our size rules list. And then for source sets, we're gonna push. Because we're gonna need. the same problem as before. We can assume maybe that the... The thumbnails are all gonna have the same form that break... I don't really wanna do that, except that we know how these are gonna be formed up. The width is gonna be the first thing that changes. So we could sort on this. It's kinda of gross, but we could. gonna be the first thing that changes. Okay, let's do that for now. It's it's not amazing, but we'll do that. Um, so instead of uh, sizes, push the size rule, and then we're gonna say source sets, push, uh, we're gonna say source set rule equals, um, we're gonna do the 2x one first, and, or we'll do it, Source set rule equals. We won't do the. We'll do the small one and the big one. Then we'll insert both. Um, so it's. So this reformat we call our function. Oh, that's right. We don't have the base source yet. Uh, oh, we will. The base source will be part of our properties raw source. It's also possible that we'll want to do some of this actually in here uh, at the time that we actually do the render, but for now I'm doing it out here. We can move it if we want to later. Um, I'm just trying to hack this thing together. Base source and then uh, width, height, And then we're gonna do the same thing, except that we're gonna do width times two, height times two, and then width times two over here. For the two times rule set. And then we're gonna push source set rule. Um, and then we're also gonna push the source set rule 2x. It's probably a way of pushing both at the same time, I don't care. Uh, don't have to do that anymore. So join this dot source sets. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sort them as well, and then join equals source sets dot sort join. So that should result in the right. I think that'll result in the same source sets. Um, Let's try that. This dot sizes. This dot uh, size stir. What do I call it? Sizes. I should call it sizes stir. Uh, and source sets stir. Okay. Sizes stir. Source set stir. I capitalize the. Source set. It's weird. Source sets. It's not source sets, it's source set. Okay, source set. Source set store. I probably missed some things in here. 
but let's see what happens when we do this. So I have to, this is the part I don't like. I have to like bundle some stuff. Um, I wish this was just part of mock build. But there you go, it does some funky webpack stuff. And then we build the actual browser. Elad Difficult says, I normally listen to Odeza when I'm trying to focus. Odeza and Odeza adjacent music. That's a great suggestion. I don't know who Odeza is. Uh, let's see, Odeza. For the people who uh, don't know, Odeza, uh, sorry, not Odeza. Elad Difficult is one of my oldest and best friends. Um, uh, I went to elementary and high school and university with, with Elad Difficult. We're, we're buds. Well, buds. Um, so they're an American electronic music duo. Do they have free music somewhere? Are they on the free music archive? I just don't want to get taken down. Because this the recordings go up on YouTube. What's the licensing here? I didn't even search for anything. Why, why are you complaining? Uh, all right, this is intolerable. Uh, I'm gonna switch to a different album. I'm gonna go back to pedal. And I think this is gonna be loud again, so I have to, I have to get ready to. Ah, that's really loud. All right, I'm gonna bring down the volume, all right. So that's maybe even a little too quiet. I'm gonna bring that up a little. See how it goes. As it develops, we might drop the volume again. Okay, so this is built now. Let's see if it works. That's probably too loud now. Back down to zero, zero, five. All right, so what do we have for these uh, thumbnails? sources huh I don't see our sources or source sets I'm get oh you know why because this is the cache document that's why this is the cache doc so let's open a new one the cache document that's the whole thing we've been working on this entire time uh, what we want are like the raw things this is now too loud again so there we go drop it down sizes max width Oh, that's no good. That's no good, that's not what we wanted. This looks all wrong. Look at what's being made. It's like, sizes is max width, 610, 201. It's like, it... It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. And what is going on here? Why is that part of the URL? I, I think I did it all wrong. Um, Here's what I'm gonna do, actually. I'm gonna use the debugger and we can step through what's going on um, and figure out why I got it wrong. So we've got this function probably that's like, it's gonna say like past sizes. We're gonna look for that line in this like compiled thing. And we're just gonna step through to the breakpoint here. All right, we're at our breakpoint. So we have our thing. Uh, let's pull up the console. And then we're gonna sort our past sizes. And let's make sure that that makes sense. This stop past sizes, everything should be sorted um, from lowest to highest. Yeah, that looks right. That looks right. And then we start going through each one. And I say width, height, width, what's width? Ah, well that's the problem. Oh, oh, because I I didn't slice from the rule. Right, 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 right. That's the problem. Rule slice. We gotta slice off the, the front of the rule. And then... Or even better? You know what's even better? Is if I do this. Like, uh, media matcher with height equals rule. 
That's even better. I don't know why I wasn't doing this in the first place. And then that, and then... Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's shut this down. We know what's going wrong. Uh, now I have to go back here, npm run bundle. Danny Colin asks, uh, or is wondering if he should eat another bowl of pate chinois. Um, go, go for it. Um, that sounds good to me. Uh, I've been making my own, own tortilla chips. So last night I made tortillas. It's surprisingly easy. Uh, I used the Binging with Babish episode on how to do that. Uh, there's a, a link. Uh, Binging with Babish tacos. Um, yeah. I think We've so. always oh, been. I don't need to show that advertisement, but like in here, there are instructions how to make how to make your own tortillas, and then what I do actually I'll do it like that, and then what I do is I chop them up and I take those tortillas and I cover I put like a I brush some oil on them and salt them, and then oh I already did the mock the faster part I don't need to do it again. Uh, and after I've coated them with oil, I roast them in the uh, in the oven for a bit, and they become chips, and they're very tasty. Eli Difficult asks, still making those, eh? Someone else I know made some cinnamon buns. You should try those. Yeah, I, I would. I need to branch out. So I've started to really get into baking while I've been in isolation. This looks better. That looks a lot better. We don't have the last one though. We need the last one on there. I forgot to do that. And then the source sets. The source set's actually kind of hard to inspect because it's just this giant string. Uh, let's take a quick peek. Source set goes. Oh, so we need to do it in the other way. We need to sort it in reverse. going lowest to highest and that's no good um, because the, the order does matter that's why I can't know I, I don't know if you can tell but these are all like pixelated and, and low quality so we have to reverse the order we also need the fallback in there so let's see here uh, sizes push I'm gonna pass in the smallest size which will be the zeroth zero with uh, width. And it's not amazing to have these magic numbers in here, so I might have to refactor some of this. Um, but for now, this will do. Why, why you, I hit it some kind of shortcut. Okay, so there's the fallback. And then I say source set stir. I'm gonna put in a reverse in here and then join. I think that'll be better. Over here, npm run bundle. Eli difficult goes, uh, it was pretty easy to make cannoli. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I've tried to up my baking game. I, I made, I've made a couple loaves of bread. Uh, I've got a recipe. Uh, I made some scones the other day, apple scones. Those turned out well. Uh, next, I'm gonna be trying pie. So I got a recipe from my mom for, for her pie. Some pie crust. So these look still really pixelated. What's going wrong here? Sizes, 202. That looks fine still. The common separation, that looks right. The source sets. Are sorted correctly. Two, two W's. So what did I do wrong? Uh, the image location. Which one are you using? Just so I am aware. Yeah, it's using like the kind of low quality one. Two eighteen one oh nine. 
Yeah, it should be using 296148 right now. And right now, it's not. What the dealio? Um, so, what's the difference in the rules? That's what I'll use. I'll use the difference in the rules. So, before I had this hard coded value of like. Let me copy these in. Hang on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, like, a. sizes old source set this is just how I'm gonna debug this and I'm gonna say like console log this dot sizes stir versus old sizes and then old source set this is this dot source set stir and old si old source set build this I did not switch to Odessa uh, this is another broke for free uh, album the reason I didn't switch to Odessa is that I um, I'm worried about I've been I've had takedown notices before if I'm not using like royalty free music or licensed like Creative Commons music I get takedown notices on YouTube when I post to YouTube. So uh, I'm trying to avoid using anything that's not on the free music archive. But if uh, we know for a fact that, oh geez, how do I interpret this? I ru I, huh. Okay, well, that was a bust. Uh, I guess what I'll use is the debugger instead. I just don't know how to interpret all that. Um, Reload. I don't need this breakpoint anymore. Just go to the end. Okay. Let's take a look. This dot sizes stir. And then old sizes. Oh! I need to reverse. I need these to be in reverse. So I'm going. Ah, uh, that's the problem. I didn't do this right. Pass sizes needs to be from highest to lowest, not lowest to highest. In descending order. And then the smallest one will no longer be the, uh, the first one. Rather, it will be size of length minus one, the last one. NPM run bundle thing. Boo, 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 boo. Here, I'm gonna play a sound effect. I'm dedicating this sound effect to Elad Difficult. Um, here you go. Oh, hold on. The web socket died. All right, here we go. How long have we been on this rock? Five weeks? Two days? Help me to recollect. Here's another one. Watches will your beans. Watches will your beans. There you go. Um. Watches will your beans. I don't. So I've seen that face a couple of times. I'm not really privy on like Twitch culture. I don't know what that face means. I hope it's a positive thing. Um, okay, so I think we've got the right, the right dimensions now. Let's see, 296148, and then if I go to the next step, that's this size. 218109, and then if I go down one more. 
202. Good. And now you can't see me doing this, but I'm going to test it on my high uh, DPI monitor now. That's over here. Unfortunately, I'm not capturing it, but you're just going to have to trust. 592296, that's the one we wanted. Next step. 436218, that's right. One more. Which location? And 404202. Good. We're in good shape. So this works. So now that it works, it's, let's clean it up. Um, let's clean it up a little and then we can test it again. Uh, it's common Twitch parlance for no way is what the face means, I guess. It's kind of no way face. So I'm learning. I'm learning about Twitch. This is great. Um, so let's clean this up a little bit. I guess I don't need to... I can do a similar reverse sort. Just one. I mean, the other thing you could do is instead of having so we can do something that uh, we we know the structure of what's coming in, and presuming that it's fine, uh, like it, that the the caller isn't giving us garbage, which maybe we should add some assertions for. Um, but because we're the caller, I mean, it's not like we're running. We're not going to be running untrusted code or shipping this to other people or something. Um, but we can add some assertions. But what we can do is we just like add, create an array that we ensure has double the size of what's pa come into past sizes, and then we just like know to put the, f the highest element, like the, the double for the first one at zero, and then the like, we have like two index points, one at zero and one at the length of the original array. And then we just like, we fill in the array at the same time, filling in the blanks, as opposed to like doing one and the other, one and the other, one and the other, and then doing a sort. You can just like, because we know, we can just like do the inserts at the same time. And that's probably better. So let's do that. So what we'll do is for the source set rules, instead of doing push, we'll say rule. I think there's a way that, uh, how do we get the index? Uh, Java, for of loop index JavaScript. Uh, I think for of, is there a way to get the index that you're on? Iterable, value of iterable, index, index. If logs array is well, iterable, iterable. I guess we don't get indexes by default. Maybe I'm wrong. JavaScript for of index. I want to get it from, I don't have to ask the array. Like if I let iterable, let a equals like 10, 20, 30. So hopefully you can see this. I'm just going to test this out. Uh, just do a quick check here. Uh, and then if I do like four, let I, I'm going to say like B, C of A, console log a b no uh, b c what do i get Oop. Uh, b c value is not iterable yeah it doesn't it doesn't like that yeah we don't get the indexes um okay well then i'll just like use an incremental uh, like increment a value no problem. Um, so at the base of this, 
we increment by one, and then we say um, source set index equals that, and then source set index plus the original length equals uh, source at rule to x. I think that'll work. So if the length is, in this case, 3, then the index, uh, like it'll be sorry, 1, sorry, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's right. Length 3 plus index 0. Yep, yeah, that's right. And we increment the index by 1. And then we push the smallest one out of the sizes. Still don't like all these magic numbers, but what are you going to do? Well, one of the things we could do is we could have this array be ha like have named things. Um, it's an array. Did I do this before? An array of objects. Where it'll be like matcher, media, matcher, and then width, height. This is probably clearer. It's a little more verbose for the caller, but it also means that um, it's clearer for them what they need to supply. And like what they're passing in, it doesn't matter. Like the order doesn't matter. And then one more. Okay. Well, you know, I like about that. It's fine. Okay, so that's the pass sizes, and then what do we do? Uh, the sorting has to be a little bit different now. We're going to sort by looking at each one, but each B in this case is going to be the, uh, we're going to go by width, B width minus A width. And then we just, we're going to assume that it's going to be proportional. Like the, it's not going to like change ratio, aspect ratio as we like, scale up and scale down, the aspect ratio stays constant. So if the width is smaller, then the height's smaller. And then what else will we need to change for this? So um, we'll just like do object decomposition here. So we pull out those properties. And then all of this should still be compatible. Here is where we need to like. And now we don't need to do this sorting and reversing thing. Just join like that. And then I think we get what we want. So this is starting to become clearer to me on how this is gonna work. Uh, it's possible we can clean this up even further. Uh, someone was suggesting using four in. Um, my reluctance to use for in is that it doesn't necessarily go over uh, indexes. Like, so uh, a equals like one, two, three, four, five, and it's possible. Oh, let uh, reload. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that for in goes over the properties of the object. So x is now an array, uh, like type of x is, well, not double x, is an object. Um, 
and that object is a type of, of array. If you like look at the properties on it, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff. Not just the um, the accessors, like the, the square bracket accessors, but as well like the functions. And so I'm pretty sure if I do like for let in uh, let prop of x, pretty sure I get a bunch of stuff. Let's see, ah, why is autocomplete failing me? Oh, well, I'm wrong. It went and got everything. Let, oh, because I used let of. For of, for let in. It's, this one's giving me, interesting um, I was certain that it gives you every property like for in gives you every property on the object but it doesn't in this case huh. I tend to avoid using for in in JavaScript for that exact reason Oh, because they're non enumerable. Right. So if the property is right. On arrays, the non enumerable properties don't show up. But if, for example, I had supplied uh, this array with an extra expando, like here, uh, x dot x gonna give it to you. Bom, 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 Then we've got like this weird behavior. X gonna give it to you. Um, that's because the property in this case wasn't given an, a non enumerable setting. But because we know that the caller. Thinking. I think I'm going to stick with for, for of, um, because even if I switch to using for let for in, uh, I still need to like transform the index back into the rule, and um, that seems like roughly equivalent to like having an index counter. So I think I'm going to keep the for in or for of. The other thing that uh, we could do is like we could do some fancy things with maps, um, or like for each, um, you know, functions. But I think we're gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, but maybe we can clean some of this up. Where's so the smallest? Can deduplicate some of this stuff. I think I'm just interested in seeing if this works now, and then if it does, then uh, maybe moving this into the render function. So, browse again, let's move tab, uh, run bundle. This makes me think of binging with Babish. This is like Babish music. Take your tiny whisk and blah blah blah. Yeah, you could do it that way with the for each function. For each gives you the rule and the index. Okay, let's try that next, actually. Two nine six. Two eighteen. Yeah, that's one. So the suggestion from who is this? DC Shadrick. I'm gonna. I'm butchering that. I'm sorry. Is to use a form for each instead. That's not a bad idea, actually. Because um, that way we get the uh, we get the rule 
in the index. We don't have to manage the counter ourselves. We can trust that it's going to work as we expect. comment that actually I think got cropped out. I think we should put back, which was the fallback. Supply a fallback in the very unlikely event that none of the media queries match. The 202, the smallest image was uh, small, smallest dimension was chosen arbitrary, arbitrarily. Since it's chosen arbitrarily, we can also just choose the first one. So let's just choose the first one. We don't have to do it. We can shrink that down a little bit. Pass sizes. Zero, sorry. Pass size is zero. Our just dimension was chosen. This is just sort of like the worst case scenario. Okay. Now that we have this, let's move some of this back. Why did I take it out in the first place? I don't know. Just thinking about stuff. Whoa! Why'd you Why'd you leave the keys up on the table? Source set need to be ordered from largest to smallest. Since we're including the two times high resolution uh, sets as well, we manually insert the the smaller of the two uh, calculated rules in the right spot. Wait, is that right? No, that's all wrong. Hold on a second. If we're going from largest to smallest, this is wrong. So I've set rule two. This should be be the other way around. Uh, whoops, no, hold on. I just, I think I just did undid everything I wanted to do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, this should be index, this should be 2x. And this should be source of the right? The larger one on top, the smaller one down here. That makes more sense. Do you think the order matters? If it doesn't matter, then we should we should actually double check. One or more. 
more strings separated by commas than any possible image sources. Each string is composed by a URL to an image, white space, width, if no descriptor, incorrect mixers. Huh. I don't think order matters. In that case, this was all needlessly complicated, uh, this part. Um, let's just double check. Let's check. We don't need this anymore. PM run bundle, yo. Uh, Danny Colon says tabs are evil. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of tabs myself. I use spaces, um, and my editor is using spaces for tabs. Here, okay. So I'm still relatively confident that these will be working. Yeah, 296, then I'll do that one. 218, and then it's the high resolution ones that I'm curious about. And that I can't, oh, no, that's wrong. 296 again, that's wrong. chose the higher resolution one for the smallest. Oh, um, hang on. I think it's because it was cheap. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one. Hold on. Here. I was looking at the cache. The cache one. You know what? To make things easier while I'm working on this part, I'm going to disable the cache because the cache is confusing me. Okay, so 296, 218, 202, 296. Choose the largest one. And then the source set. It's this big long string. Okay, so right now, what did it choose? It chose 296, 148. Now let's go to the very smallest. Did it choose 202101? That's correct. That is correct, sir. And the middle one uh, is this the middle one? This is the middle one 218109. That is correct, sir. So now we need to check on the high resolution display. One sec. It looks good. 592, 296. If so, if this looks good, then we're we're in good shape. 436218, yep. It means that the source set order does not matter, and I learned something new today. Oh! The smallest one, it matched, it, it chose the largest image. That's the same bug as before. No, 404202, I was wrong. Sorry, 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 sorry. I think I had like just the wrong thing in my clipboard. wrong about that. There's this weird issue where the largest one is being chosen for this one of the smaller states. I'm gonna see if I can make that go away by actually putting the order back. If that's the issue. I wish the documentation was clear on whether or not order mattered in source set. I know that the order matters in the sizes attribute because it's using it's using that order um, for the precedence of the media matchers that you're using. 
because order matters in CSS. can't see this. I'm sorry you're not seeing this on the high resolution display. Uh, you're just gonna have to trust me. Show us the right one. And then this smaller one. I think that works. Actually, no, it's doing the same thing. Maybe this is just a bug in how we Gecko implements source set. At any rate, uh, I think I can just get away without using order. And then I'll, I'll think about that bug I'm seeing, maybe I'll file it in Gecko. I don't know if it's a Gecko bug or maybe I'm just using it wrong, but for now let's blast, let's blow by it. Let's just blow by it. Um, and if I do it this way, then I don't need to use the for each anymore, because uh, I don't need the index. Um, this dot, was it past sizes? So now that we do it this way, instead of getting it just off of this attribute, I want it to be something that gets passed in. So let's go to DS card. And DS card is gonna have these hard coded values. Um, DS image, where does it use DS image? Right here. Bro, sorry for that noise. Um, say like uh, this dot ds image sizes that's what I'm gonna call it Instead of using this, whoopsie daisy, whoopsie daisy. Uh, I'm still getting used to this keyboard. Getting used to working from home. image so ds image gets this like ds image size i'm mixing like underscores with non underscores so ds image sizes except that no i don't like it i don't like it Props has those underscores, but other other things don't. Like things that aren't props. And like this props does now underscores. Too bad. Too bad. Are there anything that we pass that aren't props that we're forwarding? Yeah, on link click, here's one. OK. 
Okay, DS image sizes. It comes in the sizes, and then here, instead of using past sizes, we're going to use. Uh, we're going to say, let. Say size rules source set rules size rules source set rules size rules size is not past size. So what we're gonna want instead is let sizes equal this dot props dot sizes sort oh hold on a second hold on a second what does sort do does sort return an array uh, i just need to remember prototype sort is it return or is it sort in place source elements in place and returns the sorted array so that's probably not a great thing to do is to like modify your own properties. So I'm gonna splice sort. Maybe this should be past sizes, actually. Past sizes. Just naming is important. <laughs> naming is very important. Or, even better, sorted sizes. Sorted sizes. Naming is important, people. Okay. So let's see if that works. I brought, I've slurped out this to over here. Let's see if that works. Uh, if it's not immediately obvious, I'm super uncomfortable still with React and how it works. I'm hoping my reviewer helps to like um, show me to do the right things, but I think, I think this works. I'm used to the old school Bloop intensifies. Who's Bloop? I don't know who Bloop is. Oh, oh, I have I have an error. Something went wrong. So something's going wrong. Width of sorted size is zero is undefined. So I did this wrong. Uh, let's find out. Let's add a debugger and see where it, like what things happened. Okay, this dot props dot sizes. Uh, and then sort sorted sizes. Okay. That looks right. Media matcher, yeah, that looks right. So then when we get down here. Oh, I've got like this stray semicolon, that's weird. Did I do that? No? Thanks, webpack. Can't stand it. <laughs> okay, sorted sizes. Zero. Width. It's a problem. Why would you complain about that? Unless this wasn't the part that complained. Maybe there's one that complained. Um, Let's add an exception breakpoint. 
So we're going to disable these breakpoints. And we're going to... What? Can't access property width. Sorted size is zero is undefined. Sorted size is zero is undefined. But this was... An idle callback. This happened on idle. I see. So let's let's do the idle callback uh, thing. Yeah. Am I? Did I hit a breakpoint or not? No. Still hates it. So on idle callback, react. Oh, sorry. That's. Callback that's from React that's doing that, not on our own idle. No, it is our own idle callback. For, oh, the DS card. So let's set a breakpoint there. Okay. And now, let's go to the other one. And we're going to go over to here. Why did I, why did my breakpoint leave? All right, uh, let's do that again. I'm at a breakpoint. I think I'm at a breakpoint. No, I'm not at a breakpoint. Am I paused on a breakpoint? I am not paused on a breakpoint. And yet, apparently here, oh, it's the other one, I apologize. I get confused, these two similarly named methods. So I'm paused on a breakpoint. Great. Now let's go to this other place. Um, this is on scene. Now, um, sorted sizes. what's happening here. Am I never hitting these things either? Thank you. Oh, you know what it is? I have a feeling um, there are other DS images. That's what it is. So now that I expect, there are other images, DS, uh, DS images, not just DS cards, and it expects the DS image sizes to be coming in, and they're not. That's the problem. So let's find some other DS cards, uh, or other DS image usage usages. And then I'm going to probably stop the stream in like a couple of minutes. Um, splice zero removes all elements from the original array. I don't know if that's true. One, two, three. Splice zero returns a copy of an array. Splice zero returns a copy of an array. Uh, DS image here. This one, for example, we need to be able to pass in the uh, the dimensions. So we're gonna call DS text promo. Here, we need to be able to pass in the expected sizes. So what do we expect them to be? What is the DS text promo? What is this thing? text promo. Render 
component text prompt. Text prompt. Give it a text promo. Are there any text promos on the page? Like, I guess one thing I can do is I can like uh, break on the construction of a text promo. So we can break there. I, I can get rid of all of these because don't need them now. Let's see if there are any text promos. No, it wasn't a text promo. What else? What else uses a DS image? A hero. What's a hero? Who knows? A hero card. I got a feeling those are still in the works. But, um, class, hero. Put a breakpoint there. And then what's the other one that uses it? A list. List item. Uh, list item. Okay, so list item. Which one of these things is getting constructed? None of them? Unreal. Um, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do as sort of a last ditch effort. figure out what the heck's going on here. Uh, if not sorted size is zero, there's nothing there, then enter the debugger. Let's see if we can figure out this mystery, and then I'll call the stream done. A dot splice zero console out let A equals one, two, three. A dot splice zero. Right, 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 right. Sorry, I, I apologize. Um DC Shagic. So Splice returns a clone of of a it like empty Oh, I'm emptying out the original. That's what you're saying. I create a clone. I create a clone, and I'm emptying uh, emptying out the original. Okay, I don't think that's the problem, but that is true. I'm accidentally by using splice zero, I'm modifying the sizes property here. That's a good point. Um, so you were suggesting what? Uh, using this. saying to use the spread operator I think maybe I don't mind that it gets sorted in place I guess that kind of goes against what, um, I think there's like this general notion of trying to avoid side effects within a function. This is, this feels like a side effect. Um, that's not very reacty, not very functional side effects. So we can clone the object, JavaScript clone object. What's the cheapest way to clone an array? Sorry, clone, I'm trying to remember cheapest way to clone an array this is like array slice is how I remember to do it um, but but that also clears out the original um, slice from the cat and the spread operator is the fastest and that's what you were suggesting is the spread operator spread right you can just do like sizes something like this 
That's nice. I like that. So we create a clone with of the sizes and we sort in place. And that's what the sorted sizes is gonna be. Okay. I get it. I get what you're saying now. I apologize. I misunderstood you before. I misunderstood you, but now I think I get you. DC, Shagic. I'm sorry if I'm like just wrecking your name. Hey. And that was the bug, I guess, because now we're not hitting it. So, hey, thanks for helping me find my bug, DC Shagic. I'm just so sorry about your name, uh, what I'm doing to it. But I think you were right. I think that was the problem. I was using slice zero and that was emptying out the props. And I have a feeling that was somehow the problem. Um, so I guess we can get rid of this now. Unless, no, uh, I have a feeling if we get rid of that. Let's do it one more time. go and now I don't know if you saw that but there was a very mysterious tea delivery it was great um, it was good and now I realize thank you very much for the tea em. Doug uh, Doug's here do you want to say hello sorry Elad's here do you want to say hello you can just shout it you can't see it oh hello. that was M everybody she says hello and sorry about the loud alert noise. Um, I forgot to silence my alerts. Thanks, Em. Oh, see, that's a problem. Now we go back to the high resolution again when we get small. That was the issue I was seeing before. All right, I'm gonna have to sort that out. Now that I'm, now that we do that, we get that like high resolution image. And now we get the small image. I gotta figure that out. But I'm gonna do it after the stream. Uh, I'm gonna call it here. Hey, thanks so much for watching uh, The Joy of Coding. I learned a little bit more about React and how not to like mutate props. I kind of went back to school on doing things like sorting and arrays and uh, you know, it's a, it's a learning opportunity. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was interesting. Uh, and special shout out to Eli Difficult who was watching the stream. One of my closest friends, good to see you. Special shout out to DC Shagic, who helped me find a bug. And for uh, Danny Colin and Smurf D, as usual, always great to see you. And I'm gonna call it there. Uh, let me just switch to my camera. And load the sound effect machine. I hope you stay safe. Uh, and wash your hands and take care of yourselves. And all the best to you. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Uh, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. The joy of coding. See ya.